Hi there, Bob here from Insidium. It's Top Tip Tuesday time again. And on today's video, we're going to be looking at nexus constraints. And we'll be taking some particles and then we'll be linking those particles with springs. And then we'll be getting some opposing forces of repulsion and attraction and all of these three constraints and forces working with each other give us this really nice springy organic particle sim. So let's get started. In our scene we have this extrude object which has created this cap from our flower spline it's just set to three petals which gives us this shape and then our emitter is in object mode emitting from that extrude object over the polygon area and uh, the emission we've set it to shot and 10,000 particles we've also got some groups in the scene here look initial initial and repulsion if we go to our groups tab you can see that they are both here initial repulsion but we've got the mode set to first group only so when they're born they all go into the group initial at the moment there are no particles in group repulsion you can also see we have an nx question set up here and this is to do with this field if i hit play and move this field over our particles let's just make that extrude invisible if i move this field over the particles you'll see they turn red and that is because in our question we have got a, a question set up that says, let's look down, if the particle is inside the field, then set the color to red and set the group to repulsion. So by doing this, we're moving the particles from the first group to the second group, from initial to repulsion, and we're just coloring them red so we can see that transition happen. Okay. Cool, so let's get some forces in the scene then. We're going to go to Nexus and we're going to bring in an NX Constraints object. And this object, we are going to um, create some birth constraints. And we're going to put this limit down to six. And what this is saying is every particle will search within 40 centimeters of itself and it will connect with up to six of the particles with a spring. And the stiffness, let's put that up to 90. And we don't want it to break or snap ever, so let's just put it on none. We can visualize these springs if we go to the emitter display tab. You've got to make sure that display constraints is checked on. And when we do that, if we hit play, now you can see, look, we've got this cool network of connected particles with those springs. Very nice. Now, if we hit play, there's no movement because there are no forces. So let's add some forces and we can do that in our constraints object. We're going to go to our layers and add a forces layer. Now, these are forces of attraction and repulsion so when the particles are 20 centimeters away from each other they will be attracted they'll pull them towards each other but then when they get within 10 centimeters they'll then be pushed apart by the repulsion and we get this cool push pull thing going on let's put this limit up to say 32 so now when we hit play we're going to see that push pull happening they're being attracted and then they're being pushed away but they're also connected by our springs and we're getting this flobbery looking uh, sim so we want, it looks good, but we want our perimeter particles to stay still. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're actually going to use another question. In fact, look, let's get this constraints and just call that one birth so we know what that is. So now we're going to use another question. We're going to put our change group question right at the top of our Nexus stack. Then we're going to go to Nexus and add another question. There we go. And we'll put this one. This one needs to be last after our constraints because we're going to set the speed of certain particles to zero. So let's call this one question pin. Now, this question, we only want to pin in place the perimeter particles when they're in the first group. So let's go to groups affected and drag in the initial. So they'll only affect those particles. And then we'll go back to the question and we're going to ask another field question that's how we're going to drive this so ask the question and we're going to say if the particle not the age the field is greater than zero just means anywhere inside the field then do something we want an action and the action is not to set the color we want to set the speed to zero so now we need to define this field. So let's go to the fields. And what we can do, this is the cool thing, we can use our flower spline, which is around the perimeter. That's what the perimeter is, isn't it? And all we need to do is go to the flower layer options and set this distance mode to radius, let's say 20. And now there's a 20 centimeter radius around that spline all the way around, which is our field. 
So if we hit play, now particles inside that field should have a speed of zero. Yes, look, they're locked in place. Fantastic. Right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add some more constraints. And we're going to do this in a different object because we only want this to affect one of the groups. Let's go to Nexus and we'll bring in another constraints and bring it below the birth one. And this one we're going to call constraints repel. And we're going to go to the object tab. Let's add another forces layer. And we're going to put a radius of maybe 80 and 80 on this and a little bit of repulsion, maybe 20% more repulsion. And let's go to the groups affected and only affect a group repulsion. So now nothing will happen with those new forces until the particles are moved into group two with our field. And yes, look, that stronger repulsion means they kind of almost inflate outwards that is so cool now what we can do is arrest this movement a little bit you don't need to but look let's get a nexus um, drag modifier and let's put this below everything and the drag modifier let's just leave it on default but we'll really ramp up this uh, multiplier to maybe hundred thousand and this is just going to mean that after the initial repulsion blast their movement will slow down yeah, that's looking really nice, isn't it? Fantastic, fluid, organic movement from um, those particles uh, repelling each other. Really cool. So there you go. That's our setup of how we can use questions to change groups and a few opposing forces in constraints to make these really nice organic spline animations and just finally if you want to render it what you need to do is bring in a generator XP trail will drag in the emitter and this is the important bit you have to set the algorithm to constraints so it knows what to draw with the trail and then you need to select what select what type of constraint it is and it's our birth ones those are our springs so we do that and there look we have generated our trails from those constraints which can be rendered in Redshift or whatever render engine it is you're using